Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com with some hockey. 2022-23 Upper Deck Ice Hockey, 12 bucks, random team break number two. One spot gets you uh, gets you two teams. And all card ship. A lot of great stuff in here. Big thanks to this group for making it happen. Thanks to the people who bought their spots straight up, which I appreciate. Congrats again to the people who won their spots in those two Allure pack breaks that we did. So now let's uh, double up. Uh, not erase, double up. Boom, there we go. So everybody's names are doubled up. All 32 NHL teams are in. Let's roll it, let's randomize it. One and a three, four times each. One, two, three, and four. We got Matt down to Ryan after four. And one and a three, four times for the teams. One, two, three, and four. We got the Blackhawks down to the Canadiens. All right, Matt with Chicago, Kevin with the Kraken, Eric with the Sharks, Dylan with the Coyotes, Brian, Predators and Ducks. Ed, Last Ball Mojo, Bruins, Ryan with the Jets, Brian with the Senders, Eric with the Hurricanes, Stephen K with the Canucks, Nick with the Panthers, Kevin with the Flyers, Eric with the Red Wings, Ed, the other Last Ball Mojo team, uh, Buffalo Sabres. Kevin with the New Jersey Devils, Stephen K with the Flames, Eric with the Rangers, Matthew with the Knights, uh, the Golden Knights, Eric with the Stars, Oliver with the Maple Leafs, Nick with the Wild, Eric with the Islanders, Matthew with the Penguins, Matt with the Blues, Brian with the Avs, Oliver with the Blue Jackets, Dylan with the Oilers, Kevin, you got my Kings, you also have the Caps and the Lightning, and Ryan with the Montreal Canadiens. We're going to alphabetize by team, we're going to pause the video for a little bit, and yeah, like Ryan's offering up a trade. So trade window is open. We're going to pause the video when we come back. We'll see if there's any trades. Then we'll have a 12-box break. Stick around, BRB. All right, welcome back, everybody. A little bit of trade chatter, but ultimately no deals were done. Big thanks to everybody who got into it. I know this has been marinating on the site for a little bit, but I appreciate everybody eventually getting it done. Thanks, everyone. box break, right? Yeah, each enters 12 boxes. There's the, there's the 12 right here. Four stacks of three. We're looking for one autograph or memorabilia card per box on average. Among other things here. Oh, right. Upper Deck puts a little... It's been a minute or two since opening an Upper Deck product. They put little stickers on, the, on there as well. Anyway, I think we're going to get a lot of filler cards out of here as well. Replenish our stock of fillers. Blanks. We got my Lakers on the road uh, playing the Clippers. They're down by four, six minutes left in the first quarter game, just starting. Weird season for the Lakers thus far. They. They started off, started off a lot of injuries. Started off okay. Did the whole in-season tournament thing. That was a lot of fun. And then things kind of fell apart a little bit. And Coach Darvin Ham playing with a lot of different rotations and stuff like that, which weren't really working. Then they went back to the original starting lineup that they were working on before, and that seems to have done a lot, been a lot better. All right, and here we go. We got, usually they, they named, they put the names of the parallel on the back, but they don't. I thought that was a nice feature, but all card ship. 
And we've got these little die cuts here as well. Ice crystals. It's kind of cool. Let's protect these. Now again, my hockey knowledge is not very strong, so if I if I pull a hit of a nice player, I hope everyone will uh, hope everyone will let me know. Out of five ninety nine, there's Jack Quinn. I think I've heard of him. Uh, Premier's acetate, and that will be for Buffalo. Ed with the Sabers. Yeah, a lot of corners on that. That'll, that'll, this will be a tough one to grade. And we got uh, Arthur Kaliev for my Kings. It's a 100 top loader. Yes. There's Jordan Kiru. That purple pattern there, that looks pretty cool, not numbered. All card shit. We've got an out of 99 acetate card. That's Keith uh, Petrozelli, Toronto, Oliver. Uh, the Kings card is gonna go to Kevin and my Kings. Got another die cut here, Brant Clark, another king, not numbered. Ooh, and we've got a exquisite collection, Andre Kuzmenko, to 199. See, I hope he's good. Vancouver, that's gonna go to Stephen K. It's gonna fit into a 180 and these slider boxes. Yeah, it is thick. T H I C C C C C. Well, it's a bit of a tight fit, but. There it is. Jim Tarn has double figures already. Got a Spencer Knight. Panthers. There's no numbers on these? No, they're not. I feel like they should be numbered, but. We got another uh, die cut there. All right, that's box one. We'll do a recap at the end as well. I've seen those Star Wars cards with the radar glasses. Those are super, I think I have. I think I have seen them. I don't think I've seen any in the wild. Just making myself a little room here. But you did see that Aoki spent a bajillion dollars on vintage Star Wars cards. Yeah, th those still retain value. At the National last summer, I remember stumbling across an old customer actually. He used to shop with us frequently at Jaspie's. Um, that was selling stuff. He recognized me by the sound of my voice, like, Joe? He's like, yeah, so-and-so. And I was like, I, I'm blanking on his name right now. He's like, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. And he had a bunch of Star Wars stuff. 
So I bought a Star Wars graded card off of him. He also had some vintage Star Wars cards on him, like PSA eights or nines or something like that. They were that he was still selling for like anywhere from ten to twenty thousand dollars. Crazy. Yeah, some of the Star Wars stuff is, is, is pretty nice. There are some fun insert sets that are around from over the years that are really cool, too. There's one Star Wars set that had that had sort of like a five or six card set that was like sort of reminiscent of like World War II propaganda type stuff. There's Nathan Kadri crystals. And I thought that was pretty cool, and I'd probably try to collect those. Here's a uh, rookie ice crystals. I think there's a lot of these ice crystals. I think we'll just handle the, we'll just sleeve up the rookie ones. Uh, that'll go to Ottawa. That's going to be for Brian. We'll make a little card stack over there. Brock Besser, got an acetate to 299, Simon Holstrom for Eric and the New York Islanders. And we got an autograph, that's Lucas Dostal, rookie auto for Brian in Anaheim. Is he, is he good? I hope so, for Brian's sake. Another ice crystals, met to shame, predators. And we've got a frozen in ice, Timo Meyer. That'll go to San Jose. That's going to be Eric Jennings. And we've got a sub zero rookies to five ninety nine. Philip Holland, Penguins. Who's got the Penguins? That's Matthew P. That way. Kevin Fiala die cut. And to five ninety nine, Zach Hayes for Vegas. Matthew P. 84 out of 599. All right, another box down. Oh, Gil is in the middle of season two of Mandalorian. This is the way, yeah. Mandalorian, a lot of fun. I mean, whenever those seasons happen, I remember the, the first season was I think like a, it was a, I mean, I don't think it's hyperbole to say that it was a cultural phenomenon. I remember every Wednesday night, the Jaspies crew, we would all finish our evenings and rush home. And then we'd all text each other and be like, all right, you guys ready to watch? And we would watch. Text each other throughout. Baby Yoda, mind blowing. I think they're doing a movie now too, right? I think they're gonna do a movie. I don't know when that's gonna happen, when that's gonna drop, but I think 
I remember, I think they're gonna do the movie where it should tie up a lot of the loose ends for all of the Dave Filoni um, kind of era Star Wars. Put a nice bow on that, is the idea. Marner die cut. We've got a 004 out of 299, Cole Reinhardt. Ottawa, that'll be for Brian. And a Jordan Spence autograph for my Kings. Doesn't appear to be numbered, but this is going to go to Kevin. Yeah, Chilo remembers us talking about. Well, now, you know, now you know. Now you know the. Now you know the vibe. You know, I've. I've only seen one episode of Game of Thrones. And that was an episode at like a, my friends were really into it. I, I, I don't do well with, with TV series, except unless it's like Star Wars, but I don't do well with TV series because a lot of times I don't know if it's ever gonna end. You know, and I, I like more of a, more of a well thought out, I guess they were based on books. So I guess there would have been an end. An episode where a lot of people died. A lot of people died at like a wedding or something like that. And that was the only episode I've seen. Because it was like Sunday night and all my friends are gathering together and it's like, we're not gonna, we're gonna watch this t television show. We're not gonna go out and do anything. And they're like, no, we're watching this. So you can either join us there or do something else. I said, fine, I'll join you guys. That's the only episode I've seen. Here's Frozen and Ice, Clayton Keller. That's for Dylan and the Coyotes. I feel like, I feel like Lord of the Rings content uh, kind of fills that sort of space for me. You know, there's Dylan Gunther, Sub-Zero to 599. And that is also for Arizona, right? Yeah, Coyotes, Dylan. Oh, is that what happened? The TV series basically ran out of material at one point because they caught up with the books. Yeah, come on. J.R.R. Tolkien. R. L. L. George C. Martin, George Martin, or whoever the author is. Yeah, I think Lord of the Rings fills that sort of fantasy world space for me in that that kind of genre. So I did enjoy the Amazon Rings of Power. I thought that was quite good. Um, a good friend of mine, she did the, I think she did the, 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 like the, the, the season series posters for the first few seasons of uh, Game of Thrones, I want to say. Yeah, the Lord of the Rings movies are pretty long. If you start watching like director's cuts and stuff like that too, they get to be they get to be pretty long. I remember when the third one came out, 
There is Jean-Luc Foudy to $12.99 for the Avs. That'll be for Brian K, Colorado. Uh, we, me and my friends did a, uh, did a marathon. We watched the first two before we watched the, uh, the third one in the theaters. There's Pontus Holmberg, rookie. Ice Crystals for the Maple Leafs. Oliver with Toronto. And an autograph, that's going to be Glacial Graphs, Fabian Zetterland. There you go. That's why these blank cards can be helpful. Nice for New Jersey. That'll be for Kevin and the Devils. But yeah, I mean, that, that, that watching the first two director's cuts took us all day. What is that? Probably close to four hours of movie or something like that. It was pretty exhausting by the end of the uh, by the end of the evening. Out of twelve ninety nine, we got James Hamblin for the Oilers. Uh, Dylan with Edmonton. We got Jack Quinn sub zero to nine ninety nine. Buffalo Ed with the Sabers. And we got Carter Hart frozen in ice. I think you could. I think these are rip cards. You can pop these open if you want to. I guess it could be something special inside. like an awful lot of blanks for just one thicker card a box, right? You and your friends did that with Harry Potter. Watch all the movies over two days. Nice. Did you get a... Uh, what else did you do? Did you, you should have gotten like Harry Potter themed food. I don't know what that would be. Butter beers. How much, how much butter beers were consumed over those two days? Well, it's usually... Those blanks, Duncan, are generally to... To... Uh, was it so? There's like one of those exquisite cards per box, right? Those thicker cards or the frozen and ice cards. It's one or the other. It's so that people don't know where they are. That's what it is. So they'll pretty much put one in every box. That way, if let's say we were selling these packs individually in the shop, which we do, you know, so those blanks help. So people don't just grab the one that's the thick one because they know that's where the hit is. This to, uh, I guess in this sense, it wouldn't really be blanks. There's one right there. Uh, they would be uh, decoys, really. Would be the more appropriate word for it. We oh, you ate the uh, every ate the Harry Potter jelly beans, the every flavor beans. Yeah, over the holidays, uh, over the winter holiday, during Christmas time, whenever my sister and I were home, we just we just put Harry Potter on in the background. Or at the end of the evening, we just drink some booze and watch uh, some Harry Potter. There's another Frozen and Ice for the uh, Canadiens. It's Nick Suzuki. That will be for Ryan. Right. 
Uh, Gilo and other Harry Potter fans, uh, I don't know how this kind of fell under our radar. Maybe we don't talk as much Harry Potter as I think we do. Here's 926 at 999 sub zero. That's Michael uh, Essamont for Winnipeg. Ryan P. Max is doing a Harry Potter television show, television series. What does everyone think about that? I'm usually not one for the remake, but it's not a movie. They're remaking it to a television series, which I think is a little more acceptable. And I think they're going to be more, more novel, more book faithful. That's uh, for the Blue Jackets. It's David Zierick, Columbus, a die cut going to Oliver. Then we got 12 out of 12.99, Ollie Lykesell for the Flyers. That's going to go to Kevin. Wait, sorry, what? No, no, no. The the like Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, they're redoing the series, their books. And we got an exquisite autograph, Matt Boldy for the wild. 98 out of 99. Let's just put this in a slider box. I'm pretty sure they're redoing the whole Yeah. But more book faith, because, you know, obviously the movies can only do so much, right? So they've edited a lot of things, and they've also, I realized that, you know, if you read the books, there are some characters that, are, that have far more influence. I'm trying to think of a good example. In the movies, remember uh, Goblet of Fire? In the movie, it's Neville that gives Harry the gillyweed to put in his mouth, right, to create the gills, to do the swimming challenge. Um... And there's the twelve ninety nine, but in the books, it's actually Dobby, the house elf, that that finds the gillyweed. He, he Dobby actually helps a lot throughout this series, which makes his death more impactful. Spoiler alert. But in the movies, they don't really have him do that much, so which makes the death is not as impactful. Could have been more impactful. It was impactful, I guess. The movies did a pretty good job, but you know, obviously, you only have so much time. Yeah, I guess Lord of the Rings probably would be better that way, but. Lord of the Rings is, is, is different. I think, A, I think Peter Jackson did a great job. Not everyone's going to be happy, but there's a lot of filler material in Lord of the Rings. Um, obviously, the you know, books are going to be different, and, and it works for the novels, but I don't think it would have worked for the movies. I think there's a lot more uh, Sam internal dialogue, Sam, Samwise Gamgee internal dialogue, that you probably didn't really need in a movie. Uh, and I think in Fellowship, if you read Fellowship, there's a whole extra dude uh, that Frodo and the gang run into that sings a lot of songs. I think he's in the animated series, the old 1970s cartoon, but, but yeah, they dropped that part. It's a, it's a good chunk of Fellowship too. It's a big chapter. You drop that guy. Yeah, I think Harry Potter does have some broad appeal at this point too. So, and more more book faithful, and probably since it's on Max, maybe a little more. I don't know how race you can get with with children, but but I think maybe maybe they could ramp up the violence a little bit. And I, I guess I guess when they're like teenagers or when they're sixteen or seventeen, you can you can imply a little more. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be like euphoria or anything like that, but I think you get the idea. I think J.K. is executive producing it, but I don't know if she ha she'll have a role in writing it. But I mean, she's done the writing already.
The books are there. The primary sources are there. Cool cuts. So yeah, it'd be cool to see right, Gen Z lingo and Harry Potter, right? Yeah, maybe in the scenes out out where they're in in Muggle world, they'll probably they could be more Gen Z stuff there too. So casting will be very interesting as well. There's Nathan Smith, piece of the jersey for the Coyotes. That's going to be for Dylan. And Austin Matthews, Austin Matthews, well, I was going to say, Mostin Matthews. Out of 599, there's Nick Perbix. That's the name of, uh, that's the name of a new hip indie band that also like hockey. Mostin Matthews. Hey, have you heard that new Mostin Matthews? It's sick. There's Kale McCarr, Sub-Zero. Oh, I thought these were numbered. I guess this one's not. And I saved this exquisite card for last, and it is exquisite Lucas Dostal, rookie for the Ducks. Yeah, I think they're, the details of this Harry Potter series on Max has been, details have been scant. I don't think they've even hired, like, the official writers for the show yet. They announced it last year, too. I think they announced it last spring. Kind of to, I, I mean, it just flew under the radar for me. But I, I, I don't think they even have directors lined up. I don't think they have a timeline lined up. They don't even have, they don't have writers lined up. I think they're like talking to writers and like auditioning writers, seeing, seeing how they would take it, take the series, you know? Oh, um, yeah. If you want to go through, if you want to go to, go to UK Gen Z slang, yeah, it's all grime lingo, which is, which is, I guess, is what you would consider rap in a uh, in, uh, in the UK garage. I think that was more of a two-step scene, but kind of an offshoot of of the uh, two-step house scene garage, as they call it, garage. Yeah, but no word whether the writers would even be... Oh, we don't want to use the M word here, Duncan. Come on now. Um, my father would hear about this. So no word on whether uh, the writers will be English or American. Hopefully it'll be more of an English vibe. That would be a little more authentic. Hopefully they'll call it Philosopher's Stone instead of Sorcerer's Stone, which is the original English title. There has been some spec that, you know, casting is going to be interesting. Who are they going to cast? Because I think in everyone's head, you know, Ron, Hermione, and Harry look a certain way. So there, there has to be some big choices there. But there has been some speculation on, uh, there has been some speculation on the social medias that uh, the guy who played uh, Draco, would play his father in this TV series, Lucius. Because he'd be of, I guess, of that age, I think, at that point. Lucius a little B. Little B. My father would hear about this. Wait till my father hears about this. But did you hear this? They're doing a Harry Potter TV series. Yeah, I heard about that from HBO. Yeah. Mm -hmm. kind of I just don't know uh, if it's a... I think it's supposed to be a... A reenactment, right? It's just those TV shows instead, right? Yeah, it's going to be closer to the books. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the movies did skip over a lot of stuff. 
64 out of 99, there's Thomas uh, Bordelot for San Jose, Eric Jennings. Right, if you think about it, yeah, the, the movies came out ages ago. Here's a rookie, Jack Quinn, nice. Buffalo Sabres, Ice Crystals die cut. Buffalo! Ed with the Sabres. And we got Mataj Blumel, Premier's Relic for the Dallas Stars. That's going to be for EJ. Making some steady progress here, ladies and gentlemen. Another box. We're about 36 minutes in. We've got one, two, three, four, five boxes left. We've got about another 30 ish minutes to go. So, yeah, I think that, that TV series should be pretty interesting. Obviously, with all this Harry Potter talk, you can tell that I. I don't have a lot to say about hockey. I, I, I've been watching hockey a lot more. I think Kings are having a rough stretch. Ah, uh, subtlety is not, Rex is uh, not Rex's strong suit. As I mentioned before, if they were doing remakes of a movie, I'd say we probably don't need more Harry Potter. But if they're making book a book faithful TV series on Max, which is uh which would make it a little bit more gritty. Not like the Philadelphia Flyers mascot. And yes, we do need more Harry Potter. Yeah, you would think they would try to get some of those, those actors somehow involved, right? I mean, well, would it be too distracting to see like Daniel Radcliffe or Emma Watson reprising? He just played James. It's not gonna come out that much anyway. Oh, just have it be James? That's true, actually, yeah. Well, that's what they said. They're going to have Draco play Lucius in the show. Yeah, I think we do need more Harry Potter. I feel like Harry Potter has not been oversaturated like, uh, like Star Wars. Although, I don't mind having more Star Wars. To five ninety nine, there's a uh, Caden Ghoul. Fantastic Beasts is not too bad. JK actually wrote the, the actual screenplays for those. Star Trek is better than Harry Potter. All right, Rex. Rex is going to die on that hill. It's, that's obviously not true. I mean, first you start off with Harry Potter being one of the classic children's novel, one of the most successful franchises of all time, both critically and financially. I don't know how many Star Trek novels have, uh, have gained critical acclaim. Uh, it's $12.99, we've got uh, Hayden Korzak for the Golden Knights. It'll be for Matthew. My father will hear about this. And there's a nice exquisite auto, 26 out of 99, Arbor uh, Zekaj for the Canadiens. Is he good? Ryan with the Canadiens. Wow, now now Rex is just Rex is just spraying bullets like a you know, like some sort of street thug. Just spraying bullets into the street. Star Trek is better than the Kansas City Royals. G Lo catching strays. <laughs> There's Montreal. That's for Ryan. Rex is Rex is just unhinged now.
There's Caden Gould again. Rookie Ice Crystals die cut. Yeah, the new some of the new Star Trek movies were pretty good though. I actually watched it. Those are pretty entertaining. No, you started it, Rex. With the do you need more Harry Potter? Original Star Trek series bad. Deep Space Nine was bad. I don't even sure. No one no one really spends time breaking down those series. Except for the 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 deepest and darkest unwashed corners of the internet. We'll we'll talk about that. Although all it takes is one TikTok influencer to suddenly make Star Trek cool. Unlikely though. Someone, someone quick, go to TikTok and search Star Trek. What, what comes up? It'll be one account. It's at, <laughs> at Rex Geist will be the account. And it'll just be like five reasons why Star Trek is better than Harry Potter. Number five, it's smart. It's based off science. You know, number four, the acting. You know, some, something like that. It'll just be something silly. We got Chase Pearson, 219 out of 349. It's another exquisite rookie card. It's a cut a little bit thicker. It's going to a slider box. Oh, that's good, Gilo. Yeah, his username would be would be Star Rex at Star Rex. This is your boy at Star Rex here on TikTok. Five reasons why Star Trek is better than Harry Potter. Number five, it's based on science. Number four. Watch, I'm gonna get canceled by the Star Trek community. Uh, that's for the Minnesota Wild, that's John Lazat. Any relation to Blake? Quentin Byfield, we've got another acetate 299. That's Valtteri Pustinen. For the Penguins, that'll be for Matthew. And we got a rookie, Ice Crystals die cut. That's Braden Schneider. That's going to go to the New York Rangers, Eric J. And we got a Thomas Bordelou, San Jose Sharks. That's going to be Eric Jennings. That's a uh, piece of his jersey. How many Star Wars things have become real versus how many Star Trek things? Is that how you're basing the quality of a uh, science fiction program? That's really a poor, poor measurement on science fiction. <laughs> That's not the point of science fiction.
All right. Third to last box. We're almost there. We got to 299. Braden Pashal for Vegas. Archer is based, what, 300 plus years in the future. Cool. Cool story, bro. No one cares about Star Trek. I mean, people do, but we don't. Not around here. Columbus, this is going to be Oliver. Cool cuts, Brady Kachuk. Got some more ice crystals right here. That's right, Duncan. So so quotable. Such such a cultural phenomenon, Star Wars. Almost there. Stay on target. Almost there. To five ninety nine, Tyler Tucker. Blues, Matt Arnold. I guess that's why they call it the blues. Jordan Harris, Montreal Canadiens, Ice Crystals rookie die cut. It's going to go to... That'll be for Ryan. Almost there. Great shot, kid. That was one in a million. There's Cole uh, Kopke. Kepke. Got a piece of the jersey going to Kevin in Tampa Bay. Right, they're no more than two meters or three meters. Is that kind of, uh, if you think about it, is that kind of serial killer behavior from Luke Skywalker if he's blasting small animals in his T-16 back home? Ever think about that? I mean, I guess he is the son of Anakin Skywalker. There is like a mean streak in them. So... I guess maybe it tracks. Yeah, it's sort of a psych. Yeah, exactly. You know, what are what? I think if you're into serial killer stuff. Uh, I want to say that, what is it, torturing small animals, peeing the bed until later in life, right, past being a toddler, starting fires, I think. I think those are, those are uh, some of the common denominators of a lot of, uh, a lot of our, a lot of America's serial killers. Is that right? Emperor Palpatine's gonna be at the KC Comic Con? Do it. <laughs> Order 66. Ultimate power. Got a Braden point flipped upside down. I don't know. Does that mean something? We got an acetate to five ninety nine. Noah Cates flyers. That'll be for Kevin. Some rookie cool cuts. Jonathan Bergren. For the Red Wings, that's going to be for Eric and Detroit. Got a rookie die cut right here. That's Andre Kuzmenko. 
That's for uh, Vancouver. Stephen K. Got a Isaac Ratcliffe relic. Philadelphia, that's going to be for Kevin. To twelve ninety nine. That's Keith Puchazelli for Toronto. That'll be for Oliver. Thanks, Shaq. Shaq says Lakers come come back, beat the Clippers. All right, 12th and final box. Uh, you should, Chilo, because there was a funny thing that happened. I'm trying, not, trying to say it in a way that's not going to spoil it. Like, I guess if you skipped it, something happens in three where you're kind of like, if you had skipped it, people would have been like, wait, that's, this never gets explained. But it does. And book above Boba Fett. Boba Fett? Boba Fett? Han? Han? Han Solo? Han Solo? Boba? Damn. I could go for some Boba right now. Some good boba shops around here. Yeah. Episodes are shot well. Um, have you heard of uh, how they're shooting these? The series, Gilo? Oh, this is all ready. I don't think I've ever seen this in my entire life. Where something's already penny sleeved. Kind of in its own. Oh, yeah. Isn't that weird? Is it special? I mean, he's a popular player. He's going to go to Brian, in Colorado. They're like, we sleeved it. Top load this right away. Okay. Oh, those are numbered? Ah! Yeah, you're right. There it is, 38 out of 99. Thanks, Kevin. Cool. You have it. Uh, so traditionally, you're making that sort of stuff. So these are not numbered. There's Shane Wright. Um, you know, like, it's typical like green screen stuff, right? Oh, you have, Rex has seen that before. I have not. I've not done it upper deck. This is for the Kraken. That'll be for Seattle. Um, they still use some green screen elements, but but it's a huge 360. It's like the Madison Square Garden sphere. The thing, the the way they shoot it, it's a big 360 screen, or almost 360. It might even be 360. Definitely 180. But it's just a huge video wall that's like, you know, 10K or whatever you want to call it, resolution. Right, so they can do, then they could, you could just shoot with a real camera, and then you could sit there in the environment that's already you know. Then then there's like actual physical props that are still around, but this giant video screen they'll be like, oh, here is the Tatooine desert behind you, you know. So now the actors can like you know look at different different points out there, and, and you get a more visceral reaction.
Yeah, I think there's 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 a, there's a couple. Disney Plus has a couple of features uh, related to like after series after Mando one, I think. Here's Frozen in Ice. That's Yuraj uh, Sefkowski for Montreal. So they built this thing, you know, because they were, they were like, how do we shoot this? How do we not just do the plain old green screen? You don't get good reactions from, from, the, from the actors. They don't know what to act to. You know, it doesn't feel as immersive and blah, blah, blah. Or you end up spending a lot of money going to physical locations, right? You know, so they, they developed this thing specifically for that show and now I think other other Star Wars shows have started to use it. and I think other other Disney properties may may use that studio for its for other original content at some point as well I think there's John Lazat's 1299 so I thought that was kind of a, a cool cool innovation and then since it's a big screen right there you can still dress up the the middle parts with like you know, with other props and still use practical effects along with the big background as well. I think it saves money too because I don't think you have to go to a different, like, they can change that big video screen into like the, like you're going through hyperspace. So they can just change it for that. Then you just wheel in the, you know, you just wheel in the... You a nice exclusive, like actual relics and autos? Mm-hmm. Because I didn't pull any exquisite, like... I'll There's an exquisite auto. I only pulled base. That's what I was like saying. The second half should be good. There's one exquisite auto in here. I'm going to do a recap in a second. Oh, nice. Here. Yeah, because I was telling people, the second half should be pretty decent. I'm glad we finally got it done. Nice. A Sub-Zero Dylan Holloway autograph. I hope he's good. Is he good? Yeah, I haven't really kept up with his newest. Uh, last Oilers, time. that's going to be Dylan. I hope he's good, Dylan. A lot of these people just take a few years to develop. That's true, yeah. Like I forgot, yeah, forgot that not everyone's like... Connor Bedard and started playing yeah. at 18 years old. Although, dude messed up his jaw, right? Dude, he got smacked in the mouth. Oof. He was trying to like split the D. And obviously, he's like, all right, just check them around the face. Which was legal, nothing wrong with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I think he broke his jaw and he's out for like a couple months. Yeah, right? that would make him not want to do that anymore. Right, that's true. We got a numbered die cut. The Macar was pretty cool to 99. Yeah, you're supposed to do, you know? That's why these guys skate around you, right? I mean, yeah, if I'm a defender, no way I'm letting this kid yeah, exactly. yeah, split bro. split defenders. Yeah, it's like welcome to the NHL moment. There's your exquisite autograph. The exquisites are so fat. Yeah, it barely fits it's into fat. like a 180. No, I was just like, dude, what the hell? I think some of them are cut slightly thick enough yeah. where I have to put them into slider know, boxes. No, but there's another yeah, nice exquisite auto, Matt Boldy. Yeah, Matt Boldy. Yeah, he's one of the big prospects here. Nice, there you go. Got a nice glacial graphs. Jordan Spence, what, what's up with this kid? He's good. He's mm -hmm. Australian. Australian. Australian hockey player? Duncan. Yeah, they went to go play. They went to go play in, uh, in Australia. Yeah, Duncan. He, Duncan, he, Aussie. He was trying to go to that game. He said it was really expensive. And Kaliev Relic to start things off. There you go, gang. Ice 2. Second air case in the books. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking, us with, uh, breaking with us, ladies and gentlemen. I know we don't have a lot of hockey on the side, but anytime you see it, get after it. You know, I learned some new things about some hockey players. We end up having conversations about random stuff if it's a longer break, but there's some really nice stuff there. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, and I'll hockey with you next time. Bye-bye.